Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, back, back. Whew, another episode, Angels Resplendent, episode two. And like I promised, I went and I got it. So, look at that. That is the orange we're going to go with. And it should come out just like this. More or less. You know, it does have it does have a whole known oil. Known oil. We got the cheat sauce all over that son bitch. So, if anybody has this contrast paint specifically, I wonder what you use it for because I got it. I believe I got it specifically for the Angels to Splend it. And I've had it for a little while now to the point where I was like, man, am I ever going to use this? And then I kind of I forget about it uh, because Angels are Splendid just as much as I love them, they're not exactly on my mind. Ooh, you know what I should do before I do all this orange? Ah, we'll be okay. I was thinking about the leather. And as you can see right there, how that black showed right through this orange, that's okay. That is okay. But yeah, when I came to my first resplendent, I primed them in orange because I didn't have at the time a proper orange that I trusted. I had, um, or have, uh, I think it was lava, some kind of lava. I don't remember the proper name for it, uh, like the full name, but it's by Army Painter and I. I'm not going to say that I don't like it because I'm just not using it in the in the desired way or in the intended way. Um, so yeah, I'm not I'm not really digging it. Oh no, now I remember why I got the orange. I got the orange because I was doing a holiday uh, special. I was doing a marine, and I was experimenting with uh, orange for armor because I hadn't seen orange yet and it was in the middle of doing that marine um, that I discovered the angels resplendent and then when I was really looking into them I saw that they had a book and I realized I have that fucking book because yes like anybody I have so many books and I have read maybe two percent <laughs> Because I I buy books, and I love buying books, and you're not going to tell me no to buying books. I will tell myself no to buying books. You don't ever have to tell me no. All right. Like I want the Eisen the Eisenhorn um, omnibus, the the reprint that came out because I have an original omnibus, and uh, I got that thing for like fifty bucks online. Oh my god, dude. The last time I looked it up, it went for like $900. I was like, no way. I've got, I've got that. I'm like, that's in my collection. That's cool. That's cool. And I'm sure some people have been like, dude, just fucking sell it and then go get the uh, new one. Well, the new one, since it's come out, I have not looked at the pricing of the original print. And I'm pretty sure that's why it was going for 900 is because there was no other print. You know, and then they added another book to the series and all that fun shit. And I was like, oh, damn it. Yeah, I got that thing off of eBay. It was $50. And the thing was is used. It's used. It's well read. Uh, and that's not like oh, being an under-exaggeration, like the thing's falling apart. No, the, the spine is pretty worn. Uh, very creased and everything like that. It's a uh, somebody loved that book, and like they probably just really rough with it, or they read it a lot. And I don't know. Either way, you could tell that somebody loved that book, and no, man, I'm not gonna sell it. I'm I'm not I don't feel like I'm that type of person. 
uh, sometimes, you know, like for instance, if I ever go to a convention uh, like I have in the past and I get an autograph like I have in the past, um, I'll give you two examples. I got, I got to meet one of the stars of fanboys and I'm sorry. I cannot remember your name right now, man. Um, but I, I, I brought something with me cause I knew he was going to be there and you know, I got to his booth and everything and he was like, Hey man, awesome. Nice to meet you. And, uh, you know, he pointed at everything on the table. He was like, well, you know, I have a bunch of options, uh, for whatever you would like. Cause, uh, you would like a, uh, you know, autograph, right? And I was like, yeah, sure. Of course. Um, uh, but if you, if you don't mind, cause I don't know what the rules are. I was like, if you don't mind, I have something personal that I would like you to, um, to, to autograph for me. And he was like, Oh great. What is that? You know, let's see what, it, let's see what we got. As long as it's not like a dildo. Right. And I busted out my, my Blu-ray copy of fanboys. I was like, dude, I would like you to sign the actual DVD case, the, the slip cover that's in there. I want you to sign that for me if you don't mind. And you know, he made it out to me, which I know some people have a problem with, but that's, I believe the ones that want to hawk that stuff on eBay, you know, you pay 20 bucks for an autograph or 40 bucks or however much it is just to turn it around and sell that to some, you know, some poor soul that doesn't understand just how cheap it was to get that. Um, but I was like, no, dude, by all means, make it out to me. You know, he said, you know, Oop. well, that slipped, but either way, uh, to me and what else did you say? Oh uh, yeah. Just may the force be with you. Cause it was a star Wars film. Um, Star Wars fan film. And that was, that was something special. And what else did I get? Uh, I also met Joel from mystery science theater 3000. And I did the same thing with him. I brought two of the, uh, of the mini posters is what I call them. I'm pretty sure they're called that, but either way, I brought two mini posters with me. And the mini posters came in the collections that I had purchased. So the, uh, like if you ever go find their DVDs, not their Blu-rays. Cause I, I don't think one, I'm not sure if their stuff is on Blu-ray, but two, I'm not sure if it's packaged kind of the same way. Either way, um, I went and bought their DVDs and, uh, in them came four mini movie posters. So mini as in like, uh, I think they were, a, you know, a, a five by three, something like that. And once again, he had a bunch of stuff on the table and he was like, Hey man, you know, uh, nice to meet you. Make your choice. What would you like? What would you like me to sign? And I said, sir, if you don't mind, I have, I have something personal that I would like you to sign. And he was like, sure. Uh, let's see what you got. And I don't think he was ex that, or he's just a really good actor. I don't think he was expecting me to pull out the two mini posters. And he was like, dude, that's fantastic. Um, he was like, which, which one do you want me to sign? Cause you have four here. And I was like, right. I know your, I know your, uh, pricing. Cause I saw the sign and honestly, I only have $20. I only have $20 left. So, uh, I actually, I want to leave this up to you out of these and my, my dumb ass just wasn't thinking cause I was in the moment. 
I was like, hey, out of these four, which one would you want to sign? Which one did you like doing? Not realizing that he wasn't even on two of them. That was Mike. So my dumb ass <laughs> was like, hey, man, which one? Like, yeah, go ahead and sign Mike's. I just I wasn't thinking about it. I was in the moment. And uh, he was nice enough. He was like, well, I, I was in these. So out of these, he was like, you know what? And I believe he had said something to the effect that because I brought these or because I brought something he hadn't, that people hadn't brought him before, he was like, I'm going to sign two. And I was like, dude, I don't have $40. He was like, you do not understand me. I really like the fact that you brought these. So I'm going to sign two of them for you. And I was like, are, oh my God, are you sure? He was like, yeah, absolutely. I love the fact that you have these. And uh, he's like, they're yours? They're, they're part of your collection? I was like, yeah, these are going on my wall, man. I'm not, I'm not putting these on eBay. He was like, okay, I like that. You know, ask my name and all that fun stuff. So he could put it down. And we had a really good time doing that. Uh, I'm sure I started that story off with the intention of getting to a point, but I just, uh, I had a good time reminiscing on that one. Yeah. That was good stuff. That was good stuff. That was, those, that was a good day. That was the first Tidewater Comic Con. I think the first. At least the first big one, because apparently, apparently, they had had one at some hotel. Was, uh, they just had their 10th anniversary, and I saw them post about um, their their humble beginnings at some hotel, and I was like, wait, What? I was like, I thought I went to the first one. I think it was the first one that was at the Virginia Beach Convention Center. Which, if that's the case, okay, fine. I was more likely to believe that. Yeah, I guess conventions, they got to start small if you're going to try it. And uh, it came out, I think it came out great. I think they did a really good job. Um <sighs> I missed the second one. I missed a few. I know I missed a few. Um, Cause like I said, they just had their 10 year anniversary. Uh, but we went to the one last year. We actually hosted or, you know, not really hosted the damn thing or anything like that. I mean, we had a booth. We were one of the uh, vendors on artist alley. Yeah, I sold a couple minis. I sold one of my uh, my my first noise marine that I ever painted. He was I. Right. I have two more noise marines, and I know they're gonna come out better. Uh, not so much cockiness, just I know where my skill is at these days compared to when I did that. I know where my creative energy is compared to those days and not that you really should be comparing anything I guess I don't know some people have some kind of inspiring fucking quote about comparing and how you shouldn't whatever uh, lately I have been looking at my old work and like sure you can see where the skill gets better and better and better. And then there, there are a couple times where I'm just like, dude, it looks like I just randomly evolved. Cause then there's some minis and then all of a sudden, bam, I think my last real big evolution happened. And if you go on my Instagram, you can, you can really see this. Uh, I was doing some work and it was right when I had moved I was doing some work and, and the last one was, um, it was a Space Wolf Terminator. 
and it was part of a homebrew that I was first developing. And it's not my, it's not my Kaiserborn. Uh, it was a different one. I'm still, I'm still in the developmental stages of it because I just don't know what to do for a color scheme. I don't know how to work it out. But anyway, let's see. Uh, right. So, nope, nope. Jumped out of my head again. Why? Why does it do that? Why it do that to me? Right. So, right after that, you can see, you can see where the skill really starts to take off, and then all of a sudden. Karn is what I called him. Um, I'm not saying that he is the Karn because I was doing some loyalist, um, some loyalist world eaters, and they're Primaris, so obviously it ain't Karn. Um, but I called him Karn. Uh, I, I was thinking more like it's a title, but yeah, he was Karn the Indomitus as a part of the Indominus Crusade. But anyway, uh, I just felt like because I, because I really took my time and did the base work and just boom, all of a sudden it's like my damn skill evolved. Like, Oh, I, oh just, damn. I jumped up there. I, I was hitting another caliber. I was, I was sitting up there with other painters and I was like, whew, Man, you could really see I was on I was on to something there. Cause then the next one, uh, if I'm not mistaken, was Oh man, why am I having a brain fart now? What the hell was the next one? Soul Haunters. Good lord. Man. Uh and I was doing I was doing like uh no man's land. Um bases you know because i really liked doing my uh my trench bases for some of my previous work and i wanted to keep that going but i wanted to change the landscape a little bit and not use all the uh the little pieces of wood so i was like you know what they're they're in no man's land right now and that's like my little head cannon for anybody that sees my work and you see some of the same base work they're all fighting on the same planet I consider that just they're all part of that same campaign. So you'll see you'll see flesh tears, you'll see my Kaiserborn, you'll see uh anybody, the world uh loyalist world leaders, anybody who has that muddy base with um some rocks, debris, uh wood chips, uh uh barbed wire and whatnot, they're all on the same damn planet. All of them, even the ones that are just fully in a trench, um, for any of those bases that I did. They are totally in the base or in the trenches, but yeah, they're all on the same planet fighting the same campaign. And, uh, some of my, some of my heretics have that stuff now. All right, a quick side note on the Angels Resplendent. So you see how we're doing this uh, this helmet. All right, so of course, Angels Resplendent are going to have all orange helmets. I do like to do the white face. I do. Uh, it's a thing I picked up from the Cacaradons, and I've been rolling with it ever since because it just looks so damn good. I love that contrast. However, as you can see right back there, for the eyes... I'm going to go with Void Shield Blue because that blue, of course, contrasts with the orange and it looks just so good. It looks so damn good. And then I have I have the electric blue. And my ass is... I'm brain farting on what the hell I was going to use that for. Wow. Wow, I'm having a brain fart on that. And I know I, I got it out for something. Oh, oh, it's for the purity seals. Duh. Because the purity seals, I was going to use uh, glistening blood so that, the, um, so that the wax looked red and glistened like wax might do. 
Oh! This doesn't need to be orange, but my OCD is kicking in. This is not supposed to be orange whatsoever. His back is supposed to be black. So I should have painted that when I had the black out. But that's okay. Small mishaps ain't no big deal. But yeah, those... um. Those purity seals are going to be painted with the uh, with the electric blue, and it's going to look amazing. I know it's going to look amazing, and I can give you the damn proof. You want the proof? You can't handle the proof. All right, it's right here. So there's the proof. All those sitting right there. They look great. They look fucking awesome. And the one on his back. It's a little darker, but it's okay. But yeah, I love that contrast. That's because orange and blue are a great contrast. And this is coming from a guy who fucking hates blue. Of course I hate blue. Of course I do. Quick shout out to Anti-Gravity Pop. Or to Anti-Gravity. I bought his album not too long ago. Fantastic stuff. If you have not listened to him, he does some synth wave. And it's amazing work. I think he's great. So you definitely have my support, man. You you already knew that. But, oh my god, I will try to throw a link in the description. Um, lately, my editing skills have gotten a lot better, so I, I feel like I can trust myself to actually follow through with that one. <laughs> with that claim. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. It's not a butt flap because it ain't covering his butt. But look at that. You got a crotch flap. Loin cloth. Fine, it's a tabard. Fine. Fine, fine, fine. But as you can see, that base is also really starting to dry. And you see how it's looking grainy? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? And don't think I didn't... I didn't forget about that, that helmet in there. I just don't know what color to paint it. Oh, we might go with some Night Lord. Yeah, might go with some Night Lord. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know, Daddy doesn't know. We're at 22 minutes again. I could cut it right here. I really could. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to get out this leather brown. I was going to go with black for the leather, but... Uh, why change it? Why change it? We've been doing a lot of leather brown lately. And that hit me not too long ago where I was like, oh my God, dude. I could have been doing, like I could I could do black. I could do black because when I buy leather, I don't fucking buy brown. I hate brown. And my wife was like, yeah, did you forget that leather comes in basically any color you want? And I'm like, uh, maybe shut your mouth. All right. Shut the fuck up. It was my sandwich. It was my fucking sandwich. I'm kidding. She makes me awesome sandwiches. But yeah, dude. I was like, what the hell is going on? All right. We're probably going to have to get... Yeah. I want to be safe. Because we've got a lot painted here. So we're going to go with this. The. Yep. 2.0 or 2 slash 0. It's a, it's a small one. It's smaller than the zero. How do I get in here? Because I've been painting, I've been painting their belts the same color as their armor for the, like the longest time. And I guess just becoming more and more aware that their belt is not actually armor. Just some things, you know, you just, you hyper-focus and you, in that hyper-focus, you miss things. You miss obvious things. And that is totally one of the obvious things I've been missing. Is the fact that the belts are not armored. That they actually strap these motherfuckers on. And I'm like, right, right. Um, I mean, they might be armored for all I know. I, I could be totally getting that wrong still, and I'll hear about it from people going, You're an idiot. You're an idiot. Oh, guess what? Joke's on you. I already know this. All right? I have known this for quite a long time. 
okay? And I might just be older than most of you. So, oh yeah, daddy's aware. Daddy's aware. I, I has some stupid moments. I definitely has some stupid moments, but it's all right. We're going to go back to the terrace, upper city of Knights of the Old Republic for a minute while I do this, and we'll search for some music later. I want to make sure this orange really gets there. Mm-mm-mm. Whew. We're at 25 minutes. All right. We need to hustle. Hustle. If I want to, if I want to make this bustle, I don't know what I'm talking about guys. All right. But I know I want to get this. I want to get this done for you. And it's definitely not going to be three episodes. We can already tell that. But we are. Uh, more or less, 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 less. I don't know. This is going to require two coats because we're going over white and we're not we're not trying to be too thick with it. We're not trying to we're not trying to either dilly dally with it either, as you can tell. We're trying to slap that paint on, but not be careless. Of course, um, I we all know how much I don't like redoing work. That is. It's kind of a peeve of mine to be redoing the work that I just did. Especially when you just did it. I'm like, son of a bitch. That gets super annoying. But I'm sure it would be more annoying to have to go back later and do it again. Like, dude, are you fucking kidding me? You know how long it's been since I did that? You know how far I've gotten? And now I gotta go do that again? I don't know. I really don't know. I just try to avoid that altogether. Try to be efficient. Try to be as quick as possible. But like anybody would say, and I have totally said it to you because, you know, people are just, they're ridiculous. It's, do you want it done fast or do you want it done right? <sighs> it, who knows, man? Who knows? Get this going. And all right, we're at 28 minutes now. So we are now going to cut things. And we'll get back to you guys on episode three. We got the leather. I'm going to I'm gonna go back in and make that a little more pretty off camera and everything. But either way, I will see you guys on the next round. May the void father guide your brush. Have a good weekend.